the last time I made a video like this was more than a year ago, and for the record, the best character that came out of that was Slime. Since there's no riser, it's clear that no one here is going to be that great. But, well, let's see if they bring anything to the table. We still haven't seen Barbaricha despite being promised, and she was supposed to be released alongside Dragoon Kane's banner. Given that her global form was a different unit than the Japanese version, it's likely something came up there, but I'll still cover the Japanese form anyways. Her base form didn't get any new abilities, though she did get new buffs. The standard offensive grandest buff, a cooldown that busts the modifiers of her land burst, a quadruple cast, and store. She's also gained important passives like the chain layer boost, and though she hasn't gained any new magic spouse, she could still take advantage of tornado strengthening. Like most Neo Vision Awaken units, her Lair of Burst hasn't been touched at all, so let's activate her 4-4 Brave Shift. In this form, she carries over several niche support abilities, despite not being labeled a supporter in the first place. Passive-wise, she's gained Wind Absorption and a better Locked ability. In terms of damage, she'd still stick with the upgraded Black Magic, and her Lair of Burst will also deal damage and strengthen Tornado's modifier as well. The Sinnoh Alice collaboration has never even made its initial appearance, so, uh, hate to say it, but there's little hope here. Regardless, Alice is a physical damage dealer who could deal fire or ice damage while chaining with Absolute Mirror of Equity. The modifiers themselves aren't that great, as these are her old abilities, and she hasn't gained any new ones to make up for them. However, she did gain some passives, Chain Layer Boost, Killers, and the buff to her ability damage modifiers. And though her Layer Burst hasn't been directly strengthened, she does get a Grandis ability to do so. However, you'll likely want to save that for her 4-4 Brave Shift, where she switches to ice attacks that chain with Boating Shrike. In this form, she retains a lot of her new passives, gains a big land burst regen, and consolidates a lot of the stat boosts. Nevertheless, this increase in damage also pretty much locks her into ice. Snow White is also a unit from the collaboration that didn't happen. A wind and lightning damage dealer and breaker, she too has gained passives to buff her existing kit. However, unlike Alice, she hasn't gained any new abilities at all. But activate her 4-4 Brave Shift, and you'll find wind and lightning belting shrike chains with a preference for wind. Pacify, she's mechanically similar to Alice, including the way her layer burst is now element locked. Rubicante is another unit we should have seen but haven't gotten, though we did get the cool equipment that only he can equip, very useful, much appreciated. Anyways, like Barbaricha, he hasn't gained any new offensive abilities, but gains more active buffs. Combine that with his new passives and the upgraded black magic like Fira, Faraga, Flair, and I don't think I've ever seen this one before, Rubicante becomes… stronger. Activate his 4-4 Brave Shift, and his elemental resistance drops significantly. But he also gains, like, a quadruple cast, the ability to absorb fire, and massively strengthens the damage modifier of Flare. His Slam Burst is also much stronger for his cooldown ability, but it's not like his base form Slam Burst had an impressive modifier to compare against anyways. Foka gets a Neo Vision Awakening as her Christmas present. Oh wait, looks like she's Final Fantasy XII. My bad. Having been a pretty good supporter, she doesn't get any new abilities, though she did get updates that added a bit more recovery to her resistance boss, stronger recovery, better modifier boss for water magic, and much stronger mitigation boss. She also outright restores 200 MP every turn, and her normal attack has switched to recovery as well. And while she didn't get any new active abilities, she did get some magic spells. And Water Elf for weak water support, Flood, and the rest of her water spells can be upgraded to stage 3 as well. Her white magic didn't get any upgrades though, and neither did her Lair Burst. Activate her 3-2 Brave Shift and she becomes a magic damage dealer, quadruple casting her water magic and using her Lair Burst. Vayne gets his floaty swords when Vaughn gets his big stick. The floaty swords give him the power to buff his elemental damage, grant big mitigation buffs against fairies, chain of boating shrike, and in trust. He does have a few other nice tools that aren't especially impressive to veteran players, though his passes are a big step up for him. Getting a Neo Vision Awakening also means he gets a 7 star form, and therefore he gets a Limit Burst upgrade as well. The damage modifier and breaks are much more impressive, and the Neo Vision Awakening amplifies its damage against fairies. His Super Limit Burst would also boast an incredible modifier, but only really against fairies. While his magic spells do also get awakenings, his normal attacks get more impressive with additional modifier buffs, though you likely just stick with his abilities. Poppy gets her Neo Vision Awakening alongside Luis and Ling's Japan release, meaning in global she'll likely appear alongside the global original again. She's now able to increase the damage modifiers of Waterga, Eroga, and Banishga, which you can't really search for, so that's going to be forget about. EX plus 3 gives her a rather ordinary general buff, and her new passives aren't especially amazing either. But activate her 2-4 Brave Shift, and she gets 3 60% elemental amplification buffs for wind, water, and light, but she can't multicast them and their single target too 
so you're pressed to make them count. You could of course use her Leia Burst, but the buffs aren't as incredible as the cooldown abilities. With the Brave Shift's relatively short time of use, she's a powerful supporter but only for a very limited time. Waka gets his Neo Vision Awakening after his 7 star form wasn't noticeable at all. Now he's got… very normal abilities, much needed passes, and the super Leia Burst that's like veins but he hates birds. Like, he really hates birds, as the Super Leia Burst enables a snipe shot that's absolutely brutal towards birds only. After Tidus' best buddy Waka, we see Jet's best buddy Seymour. He becomes a magic tank and a dark evoke damage dealer. Even though he's a evoke damage dealer, he's also gained a bunch of killers, but none of his black magic spells received awakenings, so that's a shame. He does gain a useful support buff of big dark resistance, and a feud buff that amplifies dark damage when evoking anima. His Leia Burst has received a massive modifier buff, so you can use the killers to good effect here, though his Super Leia Burst is locked as a dark evoke attack that also magic tanks. Following the Final Fantasy X trend, Kimari gets paired with his best friend Unaleska. No, I haven't played Final Fantasy X, how could you tell? She's gained stronger active buffs, but as usual they can't be used at the start of the fight. Her active abilities have been buffed via passive modifiers, and though she is a summoner she doesn't have any field effects. Her Leia Burst has actually been strengthened, increasing its damage modifier and buffing its other effects except for that death thing. Her Super Leia Burst is pretty much a straightforward evoke attack. Amory gets a Neo Vision Awakening with the Final Fantasy IX banner. Getting a 7 star 4 means he also gets abilities there, like a triple cast and re-race, and he's also gained a much stronger attack and provoke tank stuff. Still, even though it's better, you don't want to ignore his new normal attack, especially when combined with his new Super Trust Master reward. He's gained strong killers too, alongside expected passes, and his Leia Burst also decides to strengthen his normal attack. Activate his 3-3 Brave Shift and you see more odd stuff. Flat heals, gravity, disease, full revise, and the grandest re-raise. In this form, his normal attack has doubled in base strength, and he's also gained some passes to better utilize it as a part of a counter chain that I don't really know what Japan did. His Leia Burst deals significant damage to fairies and not so much to anyone else. Black Mage Gobis gets his Neo Vision Awakening when Sessa receives a big shiny CG Leia Burst. His new abilities are Triple Cast, Flexible Chaining, and Provoke, though he's really relying on his passes to further boost his viability. He also becomes a Breaker, though the on-demand breaks aren't too impressive, and his only magic spells that can be awakened further are the Dark Poison one and Meteor. His Leia Burst has received a big damage modifier boost, and his Super Leia Burst is mechanically pretty much the same. Awakened Onion Knight receives a Neo Vision Awakening alongside the Final Fantasy 3 character that wasn't very memorable. His base form gets one big chain cooldown that also isn't available at the start of the fight, and pretty much relies on his new passes to strengthen his relatively weak hit. Thankfully, his Leia Burst also received a significant buff, amplifying its damage and strengthening the damage modifiers of his abilities, which is especially great given his old status as a CG unit with an instant Leia Burst, leaving his EX Awakenings to just give him more stats. Activate his Brave Shift with a 3 turn cooldown, and he ditches his physical kit for assorted magic. He's got white magic, he's got lackluster green magic, but more impressively he has a bunch of stage 3 black magic. His Leia Burst doesn't do any damage, but it does remove the buffs from your team and greatly strengthens the damage modifiers of a variety of black magic spells. The Final Fantasy VI brothers also bring along Gao's Neo Vision Awakening. Right off the bat we see his Trust Master reward receive a big damage modifier buff, and his Super Trust Master reward is his strong source of Beast Killer Plus. If you look at his kit he has some strong ice attacks, likely to go with Edgar, though he himself kind of leans more towards lightning. He's also received a cool RNG ability where the rates are similar to a featured Neo Vision versus the rest, about one third. Have fun trying to get status ailments, elemental damage, flexible damage, or re-raise boss. He's also gained strong passives, assorted killers, the things you'd expect from a Neo Vision Awakening. His layer bursts are like the others, strong against a specific species, but not so much otherwise. And those were all the units that will receive Neo Vision Awakenings in the near future. Keep in mind that we do have other global original units, though the last one who got a Neo Vision Awakening was Elena, who came with Louise and Ling. And while the Nier Automata collaboration has a bunch of characters they can work with, there's no guarantee that they'll actually touch them. Ultimately, the upcoming Neo Vision Awaken units are, in a word, nice. No one particularly game breaking, but perfectly decent and it helps that most of them are given for free with their associated event. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Feel free to comment below. Are you keeping tabs on any of these units? For me, it's no, of course not, Riser's not even here.